Okay, all right, now we're gonna do an example. Yay, yay, uh, he's not happy, okay. Um, basically, we're gonna look at the recursive Bayesian filter and look at it as an example, a real world important example, and then implement that in MATLAB. And so we'll have an example here and then the next video we'll go uh, do it in MATLAB. And so what is important? What do we all care about? Well, we all care about ninjas. Crazy, powerful, flip out ninjas, right? So let's just draw a ninja, there he is. There's his arm, there's his other arm. Ninjas have arms. They also have a head. There's he's wearing his mask because he gets embarrassed a lot. And there is his sword of death. Okay, it's so crooked. Okay, it's weird. And then he's also a mathematician, so he's carrying an abacus or an iPod. And he basically, this, these ninjas, they, they have some uh, beef or maybe they really like a particular type of bird. Let's say we got a little bird here. And this bird is a quail. They don't like quail, or they, or they love quail, we can't decide. Anyways, and so basically we're going to talk about how ninjas might hunt quail and how they use ba recursive Bayesian filters to find and hunt or, or hug quail, okay? Okay, so here's uh, this ninja with the quail, right? And so we're going to set up a scenario. Let's say there's a tree, there's a tree, and the ninja's up in there, right? So there's a ninja, his head sticking out, he's like looking down, he's like, what? Because he hears in the bushes a quail. There's a quail in the bushes. And so the ninja's goal is to locate the quail. And the quail makes squawks. He goes squawk and makes a little, maybe that's not a sound that a quail makes, whatever. Okay. And so the ninja's looking down. So let's look at the point of view of the ninja. Ninja sees basically uh, the world from a boring mathematical point of view and sees a grid. Um, almost uh, a matrix or a coordinate system and let's just draw a bunch of grid spots and this is basically the bushes right I'm just rendering this as an abstraction okay and let's say the quail is hidden in there and he's truly at some particular location like say right there but the ninja knows a lot about quail and he knows that the quails when he cries he does it, he's very tricky and he doesn't actually where he thinks the quail is isn't always exactly where the quail is so when the quail squats there's going to be some error in where the ninja thinks the quail actually is. And so the ninja also doesn't want to waste time and doesn't want to waste energy. So he's only going to attack or, or go in to hug the quail when he's very sure about where the quail is. And because of this error, because of this noise from where the quail is squawking of where he might be, uh, the ninja needs to iteratively update an estimate about where he thinks the quail is. And so we're going to look at that as an example. I'll go through a couple um, nuances to the formulation and then we'll do it in MATLAB. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, look at it from the Bayesian point of view. So what we have is we have a probability of our hypothesis. In this case, it's the state of the quail that is in this grid world of bushes. Where do we think the quail is, right? That's our goal is to find where the quail is. So probably the state of the quail, which position is it in, uh, based upon the data, which is squawks. He's squawking and we're trying to estimate where he is. So what we'll have is we'll have a probability of Q times the likelihood, that is the probability of a squawk given a particular state, divided by the probability of a squawk. Now, let's look at this. The probability of Q, that is the probability of a particular state. Well, let's just say, for a start, the ninja has no idea where the quail should be or where he might be. So it's a uniform distribution. Over all possible locations, 1, 1, 5, 5, 8, 8, or whatever, the probability of the quail being in that position is equal to any other position. This is a uniform distribution, uniform, and basically saying that we have no real good evidence for thinking one thing or another thing. Okay, so now let's get to this other part, the harder part, the likelihood. And remember again, we need to get the full joint distribution of squawks and states. And, and that's really hard to do, and empirically, that's a real problem for most scientists, estimating this. It, it, remember, there's lots of positions. So if we draw it out again, we have our probability, we have our states, and then we have our uh, squats. And this is a huge grid. And for the more points we have, and the more squawks possible, uh, we're basically going to have a very big grid here, and it's very hard to empirically get this. So a lot of times you do some kind of physics or some kind of expectation about the world to constrain this and make it easier to work with. In this case, we can say that the quail can only squawk in a way that it throws off its position based upon what's called a Gaussian distribution. So let's say it's this. Let's say that what is the probability of a squawk uh, condition on some position uh, Q. So let's say that the 
animal is at this particular position, let's say it's 2-2, two, two, and we want to say, well, where do we think he's going to squawk given that position? If we say it's a Gaussian distribution, we can say, basically say that, at that if the animal's at that position and he squawks, we can expect him to be in a different position based upon this distribution. That is, sometimes we'll think he's way out here, like 5-5, five, five, you know, I mean, way over here. Very unlikely, though. In general, we're going to think he's kind of around, around that point where he's actually at. And so this turns out for this thing, this, this uh, three-dimensional uh, plot of the likelihood, let's just say if the animal's at 1-1, one, one, we expect a Gaussian distribution to start and kind of look like that. If the animal's like right in the middle, we expect a Gaussian distribution of the possible squawks around there. And if he's at the far end, we expect a Gaussian distribution kind of like that. And so the idea is that if we assume a Gaussian distribution, we can then build this function very easily. That is, just assume for every state a Gaussian spread of the possible locations of the squawk. And then when we get a particular squawk, we could again just grab out this curve. And if we pull that out, it'll look something like this. Maybe like a, a high little bump like that. And that would be our probability of a particular squawk condition on all possible states. And so we're going to combine this likelihood data with our prior expectations to iteratively estimate with each, with each new squawk where we think the bird is. And when we, and basically it'll look like this, that uh, you'll have some curve, let's do it in this back again, you have your estimate, which is flat to start with, right? This is Q, this is the probability of Q. And then eventually it'll start to take shape, maybe. And you get a better and better estimate of where the bird truly is. And once you're confident enough about where you think the bird is, you'll then uh, go in and attack or, or hug. And so we're going to do a MATLAB implementation of this and really get into some of the nuances of how all well this works. Okay, and then we'll mess with this uniform prior and say maybe the ninja expects the quail to be far away on one side of the graph. And so it'd be a distribution like this. And how does that improve or mess up your estimate if you are right or if you're wrong? Okay, thank you.